The fourth and final Jaws film is by far the worst. If you've not seen it, don't watch it. This is Jaws The Revenge. I'm Jay Harang and I've wasted hours of my life watching terrible films. You should subscribe. The main character from the first two movies was Chief Brody, but he's dead. So now the main character is his boring wife, Ellen. Oh. She still lives on Amity Island with her youngest son, Sean, who works for the Amity Police, just like his dad did. It's Christmas time, so everyone's really happy. Yeah. Sean is off to move a log in the sea, but oh no. He screams for help, but the Christmas carolers are too loud. So Sean's dead. Sean's older brother Mike has come for the funeral, and Ellen tells him that she thinks the shark that killed Sean is stalking their family, as some sort of revenge for the sharks that her dead husband killed in the first two films. So she wants Mike to quit his job as a marine biologist in the Bahamas. Mike's like, don't be ridiculous, Mum. Great whites don't live in the Bahamas. So Ellen decides to come and stay with Mike and his family in the Bahamas for Christmas. Oh yeah, Ellen laughs at her son's funeral. On their way to the Bahamas, their pilot Hoagie behaves inappropriately with Mike's daughter, Thea. I let interesting people sit in my lap and steer the plane. I bet you do. Then their taxi driver starts singing Christmas songs. Many times, many ways to you. Why? No idea, but that's what's happening. When they arrive at Mike's house, Ellen gets angry because Thea is playing near the water. Then she decides that Mike's wife, Carla's sculpture, which is absolute shit. Yep. Looks like a shark. The next day, Mike's at work, and it's here we meet his colleague Jake, who has this ridiculous fake Bahamian accent, which he seems to be able to turn on and off. You stop farting around, move your ass, man. Aw, oh, you're full of shit, man. If you leave me alone, I'd be able to do my work. Their work is studying sea snails. Jake and Mike are really good friends, but Jake's always busting Mike's chops. Jake, stop busting my chops. Yeah. After work, Jake and his wife go round to the Brody's house for Christmas drinks. Jake's bought Mike a new shirt, and it's so horrible, Ellen has to leave the room. She's still trying to convince Mike to stop working in the water, but he's like, I've already told you, Mum, it's perfectly safe. But it isn't. That's right, the shark has travelled over 1,200 miles from Amity Island to the Bahamas to eat the Brodies. Are you serious? Yes, this is shit. It also seems that Ellen has some sort of connection with the shark. Oh, I see. Anyway, Ellen and Hoagie, the pilot, have started spending time together. So Ellen decides to tell him about how her family is being stalked by a shark. Hoagie's like, right, okay, that's a bit weird. Then he takes her to a carnival where Ellen dances like this. Then Hoagie joins in and dances like this. Meanwhile, Mike and Jake are doing some more sea snail research and this happens. Shit, we got a big fish down here, man. Oh yeah? How big? <laughs> Jake's excited because he's bored of sea snails and wants to research the shark instead. Mike's like, Jake, can you do me a favour and not say anything to my mum about the shark? You know, because she's always going on about, oh, the shark killed my husband and the shark ate my brother last week. And Jake's like, yeah, okay. That night, Ellen is late home after a date with Hoagie and Michael doesn't like this because Hoagie's not his real daddy. Carla tells Mike that this could be a good thing because it might make her shut up about the fucking shark. <laughs> True. And then they bang. Later, they all go to a New Year's party and Hoagie is telling shit jokes. I knew a one-armed piano player once. It took two minutes to play the minute was. Yes, that's awful, but Carla thinks it's hilarious. <laughs> While they're dancing, Ellen apologises to Mike for being ridiculous about the shark. And Mike thinks to himself, God, I hope she doesn't find out about the shark from work. The next day, Jake is making a transmitter he plans to attach to the shark so they can track its movements and follow it. Mike's like, look, Jake, I'd really rather just stick to the sea snails. And Jake's like, okay, how about this? Half the time on sea snails, half the time on the shark. And Mike agrees. Back at home, Carly is angry because she needs to work on a rubbish sculpture, but Mike's forgotten to take the garbage out, so she's had to do it. Isn't that terrible? Not really. What the hell are we arguing about? I don't know. And then they bang. I've always wanted to make love to an angry welder. The next day, Jake and Mike are chumming the water. When the shark comes, Jake plans to attach his transmitter to it. It's coming! It's coming! Ah! Ah! Yes! 
while Hoagie and Ellen are on another date. I have an irresistible urge to kiss you, Ellen Brody. Why? Because plot. So that's happening. Back at sea, Jake is trying to follow the shark, but all Mike wants to do is complain about Hoagie trying to shag his mum. All he did was kiss me. Okay. It's sea snail day today, so Mike takes the submarine while Jake keeps an eye on the shark monitor. But oh no! Michael, I got him. You better get out of the water now. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. The shark starts attacking the submarine. Mike escapes and swims into the sunken boat, but the shark chases him. This is shit, and Mike manages to get back to the surface. Mike is terrified and can't sleep that night, but that doesn't stop him getting back in the water the next day. I'm scared shitless. What the hell am I supposed to do if I can't come back in that water? I don't know, get another job? It's okay though, he doesn't need to worry about the shark today because it's going to the beach where Carla's unveiling her rubbish sculpture. Get to the point, man, as my wife now says. <laughs> Thea asks Carla if she can go on the banana boat with her friend and her mum. And Carla's like, I don't see why not, but oh no. Thea and the others manage to get to safety, but Ellen knows she has to do something about this, so she gets on a boat and goes after the shark. Well, that makes sense. When Mike gets home from work, he finds out what happened at the beach. He's like, ah, yeah, I probably should have mentioned something about this shark. Yes. Then he sees that Ellen has taken the boat, so he and Jake go after her. In this. Luckily, they bump into Hoagie on the way, who offers to fly them. Hold on, what's that? Really? Yeah, that'll be Ellen on the boat you're looking for. But oh no, the shark has found her too. Is that what I think it is? Yes, it's the shark. <laughs> that was Ellen's plan, was it? Sail out to the middle of the ocean, find the shark and fall over. Anyway, Hoagie lands the plane and Mike and Jake swim to Ellen's boat. Somehow, Hoagie's not dead. So the four of them decide it's time to kill the shark, and Jake has an idea. He's gonna put something in the shark's mouth that will allow them to remotely give it electric shocks. Very impressive indeed. I don't understand how the science works, but if you do, explain it in the comments. Thanks. So Jake gets into position to put this thing in the shark's mouth. What could possibly go wrong? Oh well, at least he managed to get the thing in the shark's mouth, so Mike can remotely electrocute the shark. Oh yeah, this shark roars like a lion. But oh no, the thing stopped working. Oh no! Mike taps it a few times, which makes it work again. This final shock makes the shark hang out of the water for long enough for Ellen to spear it with the front of the boat, which somehow makes the shark explode. What? Yep. This is an interesting freeze frame. The boat sinks, but Mike, Ellen and Hoagie have all survived. Good. So has Jake. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. <laughs> it is. So Hoagie flies Ellen home, and that's the end of the film. What a pile of shit. So until next time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, and check out this other video. Thank you.